Okay, so I'd like to go now again into surrender. So there's a question. If I surrender my life to the Almighty, can I remain carefree thereafter? One who has surrendered would not raise this question or any other question. Surrender is not a means to an end. Something that involves doing cannot be surrender. Give up everything and stop caring for anything on the mental plane. That is surrender. Some, when asked to surrender, reply, Done, Swami. Now, when am I going to realize the self? It is absurd. To surrender is to abandon even the fundamental or random mental conceptualization of I thought. If you, if you are yourself not there, who is going to raise questions or doubts? After true surrender, only silence remains. True surrender. What is the crux, then he asked, then this man asked, what is the crux of Bhagwan's teaching? You say, I am. Find out who is. You say, I am. Find out who is. Find the source of thoughts. Stay there once and for all. How do I know that this whole thing about self-realization isn't just, isn't just one big scam? Bag one. That is just what it is. <laughs> <laughs> what? Question. What? Then why are you running this ashram and misguiding people? <laughs> I'm not running any ashram. <laughs> people come here and ask, how, how the self is to be realized. They are told something, and then they go away, contented for the time being. As far as I know, there cannot be anything to form the subject matter of realization. The self is always in realization. The sun cannot know darkness. There is nothing besides the self to realize the self. There are not two selves, so that they may realize each other. So, who is to realize what? If everything, in, in brackets, including the renouncer foremost, is abandoned, if everything is abandoned, the self stands, revealed. But people will not understand this and want to realize the self. What can I do? How to realize that alone which is real? Can you impart reality to reality? Is it not ridiculous? All that is possible to do is to unrealize the not self. Then the self alone remains. So, in my opinion, this is completely brilliant. Completely brilliant. You should stick it on your home page, you know. Because, because this is what we all do, you know. We, we try to, as he says, we try to do something with, which is absurd. I myself, for years, had this, uh, can I say, I had this intention that I'd like to become enlightened. So one day I will become enlightened. And I don't know really, but maybe from 30 to 40 years old, I had this idea for 10 years that I want to become enlightened. And then one day I discovered I'm already enlightened. Everybody's enlightened. Nothing to get. It's like when God makes a human being, he also gives you the stamp of, I would rather say, realization or enlightenment. Every little kid, as they come out of mummy, is already enlightened. And then we spend our whole life trying to become enlightened. 
And as he says, this is ridiculous. And the other thing that's ridiculous is that we try to understand what enlightenment would be. How will I be when, I, when it's enlightened? There was a guy asking me from Norway yesterday, explain about you know, your enlightenment or your realization, right? There's nothing to say, really. I have no idea how to, I could possibly explain to somebody how, how it is inside me. I can't even explain it to myself. I don't even try to explain it to myself. Like I've said many times, try to explain to your best friend what chocolate tastes like. Just try it with a few friends, you know. You explain to them what chocolate tastes like. You see, and then give them a piece and they'll be surprised that this chocolate is completely different from what you've been telling me chocolate is, you see. So, as he says, it's not about becoming realized, it's about getting rid of all the stuff that you believe is true, which you've been told is true, all the concepts, all the desires, all the wantings that you, and philosophies, and all this stuff that you believe inside you. All this has to go. And when all this stuff goes, what is left? What is left is your realization, which has always been there. This is the crux of everything about Advaita. That's the crux, that's the, the foundation of Advaita, Vedanta. It's exactly that. So it's basically very simple. But it very, becomes very, very complicated because I say to my, well, I, I used to say to myself, you know, I'm a spiritual seeker. I'm seeking for enlightenment. You know? Then I read all the books. I go to all the talks. I watch, well, in my day, there was no YouTube video. So in my day, you had to read it in books, you know. There was no, there was not such a much available as there is now. But the danger with all this availability now is you can get completely confused. You go on YouTube and this girl says this and this girl says that and over here there's a man who's saying this and over here there's a man saying that and then you can go on and on and on. There are hundreds of people trying to explain realization or enlightenment. And much of what's being explained and much of what's being taught just bullshit. These people are caught up in bullshit because, because of, like I was for years. You know? I think I've told this many times. I tell you now a joke about John David. So when I came to Papaji, I came from 15 years of being with Osho. And in, in Osho's ashram, there was a strong sense of, I need to do something to become enlightened, right? He talked about enlightenment in that way, somehow. I got it like that. I got it like that. Maybe I was just not getting it right, but that's what I got from listening to him about enlightenment. It could be something that might come to me if I was a good boy and did my homework and all the practices and blah, blah, blah. So then I go to Papaji. Uh, well, I asked him one question, which he quite liked, actually. He liked my first question. He, he was a bit impressed because it was a rather good question. It's this question, you know, uh, maybe, well, I won't go into that. Okay, there, there was quite a good question. And then my second question, I thought was completely brilliant, you see, because I said to Papaji something like, um, oh, God. Oh, yeah, I, I, I've, Papaji, I've got so many blocks, so many blocks. Can you please help me to get rid of all my blocks, you see? So this was a question coming out of my 15 years with Osho because we talked a lot about blocks. So this, was, this seminar was to help you with that block and the, the one over here was to help you with that block. So I was always involved in blocks and I had the idea, you know, I have many blocks. And Papaji, you know, please help me, you know, I thought maybe he has a great technique for getting rid of blocks, you see. So I say to him, um, can you help me get rid of my blocks, yeah? 
and I'm waiting for some brilliant answer. And he says to me, show me your blocks. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> My mind kind of went crazy. You know? And some friends who were there told me later that they thought I was going to get it in that moment because they could feel my mind completely freaking out. You see. Well, show me the blocks. You know, I don't know what a block is. You know. What the fuck is a block? You know? I don't know what a block is. You know? And then I realized I'm just talking bullshit, you see. I'm talking complete bullshit. And he just showed me the bullshit by asking me, show me the blocks. This is a master. That's what masters do. Masters are not interested in all this intellectual, spiritual nonsense. Just show me the blocks. <laughs> so 15, years, 15 years of serious spiritual work, you know, looking for all my blocks, trying to deal with all my blocks, and so on and so on and so on. And in, in one second, he nearly killed me. You see? You see? Fantastic, fantastic. That's the real spiritual stuff, you see.